Hello everyone and welcome to another Physiology for Engineers class by Professor Gonzalez Fernandez at Lehigh University. Today we are going to look at the membrane potential, which is very important to understand the action potential that is going to come next and therefore the membrane potential and the action potential is essential to understand and comprehend how uh, the um, a nervous impulse is transmitted from uh, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system to the diverse uh, tissues and organs in our body. So first of all, uh, here uh, we have a, a neuron and the neuron has different parts. Uh, this part here is the neuronal body that has the nucleus, uh, for example, also the um, endoplasmatic reticulum here and uh, the, uh, for example, the um, uh, mitochondria. Around the neuronal body, we have uh, the dendrites, then we have the axon here, and finally, we have the axon terminal and the synaptic terminals, uh, where the vesicles containing the neurotransmitters are going to be transmitted to the tissue or to the next neuron. In order to understand the membrane potential, uh, first, uh, let's define it. So the membrane potential is the voltage difference across the cell membrane. Therefore, is the difference of electric charge between uh, the outside of the cell or extracellular space that we are going to call E and the inside of the cell or intracellular space that we are going to call I. Okay. And this membrane potential when the cell is at rest, so the resting membrane potential is around minus 60 to minus 90 millivolts. Therefore, the membrane potential is negative. And now I want to explain why and the different reasons that are going to influence into the negative or the positivity of uh, the membrane potential or uh, the reasons that are going to make the cell more negative. So the first reason is different negatively charged uh, cell components. So the cell, inside the cell, we have uh, different uh, components and molecules that are negatively charged and they are going to contribute to making this uh, resting membrane potential more negative. So for example, we have the nucleic acids like DNA that are negatively charged. We also have some proteins that are negatively charged and we also have some ATP that is also negatively charged. In combination with uh, these negatively charged components inside uh, the cell, we also have the sodium potassium pump So this pump is an ITP pump uh, that is a transmembrane protein, a transporter that we can draw here in the cell membrane. And the transporter is going to send outside the cell three ions of sodium and it's going to bring two ions of potassium. And because it's sending outside at three positively charged ions and only bringing two, this is going to contributing to making the inside of the cell more negative. So uh, also in this process, ATP is consumed. In addition to uh, the uh, sodium potassium ATP pump, uh, we are going to have a third reason of why this happened, which are the ion channels. So uh, the cells, the cells in our body, are perme permeable to different uh, ions uh, in, in uh, our extracellular space. Uh, and in this case, uh, the most important for the membrane potential uh, are uh, the uh, sodium, so the potassium. And here we have a potassium channel, the sodium. and then a negative ion, which is the chlorine, okay? So these different uh, ion channels are going to move uh, these different ions, potassium, sodium, and chlorine, into different directions depending on the quantities of these, as, uh, of these ions in the intracellular and extracellular space. So uh, in order to understand this, let's look at the specific uh, concentrations of the different ions. So we have in the intracellular space, 
So we have the potassium that is 150 millimolar. We have the sodium that is 15 millimolar. And we have the chlorine, which is five millimolar, okay? And then let's look at these concentrations in the extracellular space. So in the extracellular space, the potassium is five millimolar. The sodium is 145 millimolar. And finally, the chlorine is 125 millimolar. So if uh, you came uh, to the class about osmosis and about the different gradients um, uh, that are established between the cell and uh, the outside of the cell, uh, you will remember that uh, we'll, like these ions will always go from the more concentrated to the less concentrated, right? So what is going to happen is that uh, the sodium, uh, sorry, the potassium first is more concentrated here inside the cell, so it's going to live outside the cell. But in comparison, the sodium and the chloride uh, here inside the cell is less concentrated than outside the cell, so these ions are going to enter. And this change in, in ions are going to contribute, is going to contribute uh, to establishing this negative uh, resting membrane potential. Because there are more potassium ion channels in the cell membrane because neurons are more permeable to, to uh, potassium. And because we have more potassium ion channels, we are going to have more potassium ions leaving the cells and therefore contributing to a more negative uh, charge inside the, ce the cell and therefore to a more negative uh, membrane potential. But uh, as we see here, uh, we have two different processes that are going on. We have a, a concentration gradient process, and uh, as we uh, pump in um, these uh, ions and we pump out other ions, we are also going to establish uh, this, electric, uh, this electric gradient. And at some point, the electric gradient is going to neutralize uh, this concentration gradient. And this point is the equilibrium potential. Uh, the equilibrium potential for each ion, uh, which is uh, the uh, membrane potential at uh, which there is not uh, the, uh, this uh, transportation of different ions is neutralized. And uh, this equilibrium potential is calculated uh, through the Nernst equation. And uh, the equilibrium potential for potassium is going to be equal to 61 divided by C logarithm of the concentration of potassium in the exterior of the cell divided by the concentration of potassium in the inside of the cell. So if uh, the cell was only permeable to uh, potassium, if the cell was uh, selectively permeable for potassium, we could use this equilibrium potential to calculate or predict the member potential. But that's not the case, uh, because as we have seen here, due to the ion channels, the cell is permeable uh, to uh, different uh, ions. Uh, it's permeable to uh, potassium, it's permeable to sodium, and it's permeable to chlorine. So therefore, we cannot calculate the membrane potential just by the um, uh, Nernst equation. We just calculate one ion, but we need another equation that takes into account all these three ions to calculate the true membrane potential. So this is done uh, through the goldman hawking katz equation. goldman hawking katz equation, which is going to determine the membrane potential, um, assuming uh, different concentrations of ions in the intracellular and the extracellular space. So we have that uh, the membrane potential is going to be equal to 61 set logarithm of, and first we have potassium concentration, uh, and we also have the permeability here, which is another uh, important factor here. So we have the permeability of, uh, of uh, uh, potassium and the concentration of potassium in the extracellular space, plus uh, here the permeability of, uh, sorry, 
of sodium plus the multiply by the concentration of sodium in that extracellular space plus the permeability of uh, chlorine this is a positive multiply by uh, the concentration of chlorine and this is different because this is negative so instead of the extracellular space it's going to be in the intracellular space okay and this is going to be divided by the same but in this case in the intracellular space for uh, potassium plus the same for sodium in the intracellular space plus finally the same for chloride but in this case because it's negative in the extracellular space okay okay great uh, so again uh, this is how uh, the uh, membrane potential is established we have uh, three reasons by which uh, this membrane potential this resting potential is negative uh, we have the negative components and uh, we also have the sodium potassium pump and finally we have uh, this ion uh, channels that are going to allow uh, these uh, ions change between the inside and the outside of the cell in the direction of the concentration gradient until uh, the concentration gradient is neutralized uh, by uh, the charge and that point is called uh, the, uh, the equilibrium uh, the, the uh, equilibrium potential which is calculated by the Nernst equation uh, and then we in order to calculate the membrane potential we have to use the uh, goldman uh, hodgkin katz equation that accounts for all the different ions in in the cell um, very important here in uh, the Goldman equation to understand that um, here on the top we have the potassium and the sodium in the in the extracellular space and the chlorine in the intracellular space and here under it uh, we have the uh, potassium and the sodium in the intracellular space and the chlorine in the extracellular space okay uh, so next we are going to see uh, the action potential and how uh, the nervous impulse is transmitted i hope that you enjoy your class uh, see you next week